Hello. Hello. Solutions and solubility guidelines. We're going to hit up the different types of solutions, so some definitions, nope. review. And then on the table app, how do we use that then? And we're also going to show you how to do double swap reactions, double replacements, and predict if the product is soluble or insoluble. Yes, we'll precipitate for it. So first so, off, go ahead. Definition. Solution implies that there are two substances that have mixed to form one new substance that is the same throughout. So when you put a solute into a solvent, those solute atoms, molecules, however you want to look at, spread completely evenly throughout the entire solution. It's soluble. really good at charades, by the way. So really good at charades. That is the definition of a solution. If neither of us use the word mixture. solution from here on out, that implies that instantly, okay? Because that's what a solution is. Now, solute is the substance in the solution that is being dissolved, by definition, smaller in quantity. Mm -hmm. And that leads us to the solvent, which is the substance that does the dissolving and by definition is in greater amount. So my imaginary example, salt, solute, water, solvent, salt goes into the water, dissolves. Salt, water is a solution. It spreads perfectly evenly. Maybe throughout. gargle it if you're getting Making a it throat. a homogeneous a solution. Yeah, now don't be mad at me. There is a lot of room here, milks. But listen. Dis dissolving and dissociation, you need to know the difference. We're going to get into it a little bit more in depth. So dissolving is the first step when the actual molecules of the solid break apart from their neighbor molecules and, and water. full molecule. But, right? Water all, all the way around it. All around. Okay? So That's dissolving. The solid goes from the solid to the particle model where they're dissolved around all the water. Right, and lots of things dissolve, but not everything dissociates. Right. Now, dissociates is when those actual molecules break apart into their ions. Mm -hmm. And the ions can then move around separately and freely. So ionics do this, covalence does not. not. Now that leads us to this term that we use all the time, like dissolves like, does need a little bit of description. It is our saying to help us remember that only polar solutes will dissolve in polar solvents and only nonpolar solutes will dissolve in nonpolar solvents if you have a mismatch, meaning Polar one, nonpolar the other. Right. It's so, not a gonna mix. Right. So polar, like water, water's polar. If I put polar a polar solute is, into it, it will dissolve. So this is dissolved. Because they are like. But if I take a polar and a nonpolar, like oil and water, they will not dissolve. Okay? That's why oil and water salad dressing separates. Because water, polar, salad dress oil. Nonpolar, they so don't a, mix. So I got a nonpolar with a polar. Not going to mix. Right, so um, insoluble. Mm -hmm. Good word use. Thank you. I, choose, I wanted to choose a better word. Nonpolar like oil with another different oh, type of soluble. oil. Wax, soluble. Now I noticed or I changed sure. them up. Will dissolve, won't dissolve, soluble, insoluble. Means the same thing. Oh, it does. It does. So let's so carry along. on here. Alloys, these are really important to our human lives. It is technically a solid solution, a mixture of two or more metals, producing more desirable effects like strength, sort. durability, reduced weight. Nope. All the tools in my shop at home are alloys. If I had made my tools out of pure iron, they'd be rusting just sitting there on the bench. Yep. Mix another metal in, doesn't rust. They would rust with the water in the air. Yeah. Now, we, we changed. changed this. We got away from aqueous. was a little bit of a pigeonhole. We went straight to just liquid. Mm -hmm. um, by definition, solutions will not settle upon staining. That's muy importante. Um, water is what we call the universal solvent because it's um, polar, but it's also a covalent. So that's kind of it's got it can do polar and nonpolar can dissolve all sorts of stuff. But it's not the only solvent out there. So some there's some more pol polar solvents that do stuff. There's some more nonpolar solvents to dissolve other things, and that's where we get the like it dissolves alike. Because not everything's going to dissolve in water. Not everything time you're going to try and dissolve something in water. So water does a great job. It's always our exception to these rules. That's why it's universal. Right. But colloids. Three types of non-solutions. A colloid is not a solution. It looks like one, though. It does it look like fails one. fails the Tyndall test, which, which we'll tell you in a minute. Yep. Uh, suspension is, I don't even like the word, but it's two vi visibly different things. So think of like coffee grounds in water, mm -hmm. fall right to the bottom, dirt in water. I can separate them out. They will separate upon standing. You shake them for a minute and it might look like a solution, it but changes. if you come back an hour later, it's changed. Right. So emulsions is a fine dispersion of liquid droplets or minute droplets that aren't really soluble or miscible, but it really will kind of look like mm -hmm. A solution, and I, we got a good one for example for that. And milk, you might have one in your fridge. Yeah, milk or um, mayonnaise, right? 
These are technically not solutions or emulsions because if you look at them under a microscope, they're not the same throw. They're not the same. Throw. Tyndall effect is we use a, a laser, a laser beam. Mm -hmm. You get a laser beam. You can see the dot on my hand. Maybe if there was a solution in between us, the laser and my hand, the solution you would not see the laser beam traveling through the solution. But if it was a colloid, a suspension, or an emulsion, you would see the shaft of the laser beam throughout the body of that solution. Right. That implies that the the particulates in the, is it a solution or is it not, are so big that it will reflect the laser light towards your eye, showing you that it's not really a solution. Mm -hmm. okay. Table F. How do we read this, Mr. Monaco? Draw me a funnel. Funnel? Like Mr. Mr. Milks? Yeah. What gets stuck in a funnel if I'm doing a filtration? Uh, the stuff that's not soluble. Good. That's exactly how I look at this chart. If you're in the middle of the chart, you're an insoluble compound, means you will not dissolve. If you're on the outside, either side of the funnel, you are a soluble compound, which you will dissolve. So how do we use this dang chart? Well, you got to learn about using the chart by looking at the names and the formulas of chemical compounds. This particular one, as we know, is sodium chloride. Now, the best way to use the chart is to use the anion, the negative ion first. Go find it on the chart, Cl. So Cl there is the soluble compound. And then you look to see the cation, the positive part, the Na, the sodium. It's not an exception to the rule. So therefore, this compound is soluble. Okay, So that is how we write an S for sure. Now, next chemical, AgCl2, so silver chloride. Again, we're going to use the chloride, the chloride part to find our place in table F. There's chlorine again. It says it's soluble, but wait, got to check the exceptions. You look to the cation, the metal ion, the positive ion, the first half of the formula, and you see if it's in the exceptions rules. If it is, then you got to go away from what that title is chart heading said. Yeah, so exceptions it, is the opposite. Right. So if it was sio, an exception to it is inside. Now, ALPO4, just because it's a polyatomic ion doesn't mean you should panic. Aluminum phosphate. Okay. So we're going to use that PO4 and we're going to find PO4 on the chart somewhere. Uh, there it is. Now the chart does include the ionic charge of the uh, polyatomic ion and it says phosphates are insoluble unless... The metal ion or the cation is from group number one or ammonium. And aluminum is not from group number one. It's from group 13. So we'd have to call this insoluble. Now, the last little bit of this lesson is to do a double replacement reactions and predict the solubility of the products. So when we're determining the products of a reaction, it's really, really easy. You take the first metal and put it with the second nonmetal. And you write the new formula, MgCO3. So you see how we're doing brackets, first to last, last to first. So MgCO3 and NaBr. And then all you would do is you'd go to that chart F and decide which one's soluble and which one's insoluble. I do believe that magnesium carbonate, find carbonates here, carbonates. Carbonates are insoluble unless group one or NH4. Magnesium's group two. So I know that magnesium carbonate is insoluble. And bromine, bromides, we are halides. Halides are always soluble, especially when sodium is involved. So we call that soluble. And in this case, that S is not solid. It means soluble. Yes. And I means insoluble. Yes. Now the next one, again, we're going to go first to last and then last to first. So the new compounds we're going to make are ammonium, I remember chloride. In, I remember in class when I've seen you do a show. Yeah, I was at top and bottom. There you go. So we're going to make ammonium chloride, so NH4Cl. Notice I'm not bringing over the two on the Cl, and I didn't bring over the two on the Na. And the These PR. are not balanced necessarily. We're not balancing here. You can balance them, but we're just trying to show the well, products. You still got to do crisscross if you're going to balance. You can't just bring over the subscripts. you gotta, you got to do it and then crisscross the charges and build them and then balance. Okay, so, so now we look and see. Back. Chlorines, halides, group one, they're always soluble, so that's soluble. Carbonates, CO3, are insoluble unless ammonium or group one. Calcium is from group two, so that is insoluble. That's our solid precipitate. So you're going to find, we're going to ask you to circle those. Yeah. That's it. Thanks. Thanks. See you.
Ah, buttons. Everything worked out perfect. 